Hello everyone, so this video is about neural networks and its applications and for those of you who are completely new to neural networks, I think this particular video will be a good starting point and I am hoping that after watching this video you will dwell deeper into things that are not covered in this video. So um, this is a three part video, so the first part we will take a look at the motivation and why we are trying to use neural networks. The second part we will uh, well a bit into the theory not too deeply into the theory of neural networks and finally in uh, part 3 we will uh, apply this on uh, MATLAB imaginary story time imagine that I work at a combined cycle power plant and I'm minding my own business checking to see if the conditions look normal in different process operations out of nowhere, my boss appears and assigns me a task of building a model that predicts power output for a given condition. Now, first of all, my work is mainly focused on gas turbine section and I have other work for the day too. Is this the end of my job? Then an idea strikes my mind. I ask my boss for some plant data and the boss agrees to provide me with the data. With large amount of data in hand, and a trained neural network, I don't need to know the deep details behind the physics of the entire system. So evidently, uh, my boss wants make, uh, me to make a mathematical model and uh, I have to build one, right? But it doesn't make sense to build a mathematical model without understanding a bit about the system. For example, uh, some of you, I mean, most of you might not know what a combined cycle power plant is. I mean, I didn't know what it was, so... Um, let's take a look at the system. So let's understand a bit about the system that we are talking about. So this is a combined cycle power plant and it is comprised of gas turbines, steam turbine and uh, heat recovery steam generators. So we supply gas or fuel oil to the uh, gas turbine and the flue gas which is uh, which consists of really high temperature is then subjected to some amount of uh, water right and it produces high pressure and low pressure steam respectively depending on where uh, the heat recovery takes place and then uh, we supply the steam to high pressure uh, and low pressure steam turbines and we are able to generate electricity here as well all right so um, before we generate a neural network we need to know a slight bit about the system and by the virtue of previous knowledge it is it it is known that the gas turbine load is sensitive to ambient temperature atmospheric pressure and relative humidity and uh, it has also been seen that the steam turbine load is sensitive to exhaust steam uh, pressure or the vacuum over here all right so if you want to know more about the system and uh, where I got this all these things uh, I have uh, put the link in the description box uh, it's a really nice paper highly cited you can uh, take a look at it okay so basically what will I do with this data what what can I do with this data so basically we have uh, ambient temperature which I mentioned vacuum ambient pressure relative humidity and the output data which is the power generated right so i want to create a model such that if i give it these four data input data i should be somehow able to predict what the power output would be so for this we will be using something known as the feed forward network and uh, it is one of the most uh, basic neural networks uh, available so this this particular model is called as feed forward because information flows in uh, you know forward direction and uh, we are not sending any information back from say this part of the model back to this part so okay let's look at the structure ones so these are called as neurons right these individual uh, circles that you see and these are the building blocks of a neural network and this is called as the input layer these are called as hidden layers anything in between the input layer and output layer is called as hidden layer and finally uh, whatever layer 
gives us the output is called as the output layer all right so let's talk a bit about neurons itself right so let's see what happens in a neuron so step one say x1 and x2 are uh, inputs right it's multiplied by a weight all right what is a weight i will explain soon okay so each of this x1 is multiplied with a weight w1 plus x2 is multiplied with a weight w2 all right and these weights these weighted inputs are added to a bias b okay so w1 w2 and b are obtained by uh, training the neural network so right now these are variables all right once we train a neural network we are able to obtain what w1 w2 and b is and finally the sum is passed through an activation function now activation function is some function f which takes in this okay and gives us an output now there are several activation functions available so here we can see sigmoid function tan hyperbolic function relu function so all these are uh, commonly used activation functions how do we select activation function that's whole another area of uh, research so uh, finding activation functions number of layers in a, a neural network how many neurons are present in each layer are called as hyperparameters and uh, we can optimize hyperparameters as well but uh, maybe that's for a later video and it's beyond the scope of this video so okay so let's look at an example problem uh, just so that we understand what's going on in a neural network so okay let's imagine we have uh, x1 and x2 which is input to a neuron right so step one and step two is basically this we have weights from this neuron neuron one all right and uh, we have weights from neuron two so this is a two cross two matrix right and we multiply it with the inputs we have stacked the inputs right and this is two cross one matrix so what happens when we multiply two cross two into uh, matrix into two cross one matrix we get a two cross one matrix and then we add biases of the respective uh, neurons all right so suppose this is a all right this entire operation we uh, subject it to an activation function f of a and then we finally get x1 dash and x2 dash all right say we have x1 dash here as output and x2 dash all right now for layer 2 the second layer we have three neurons right so we will again stack these weights and biases such uh, rather we'll again stack these weights such that it's a three cross two matrix this time right so it will be uh, w11 w12 w13 and so on over here and uh, when you multiply a 3 cross 2 matrix into 2 cross 1 matrix we get a 3 cross 1 matrix and we subject it to uh, we add a bias to it right which will be a 3 cross 1 matrix and finally we uh, subject it to a, an activation function so how do we train a neural network right the question comes in so how do we get the values of weights and biases well this topic i won't be covering in uh, really deep detail and uh, i'm hoping that the ones who are you know really getting interested into this topic can look into how we try optimizing this entire thing so far so basically this whole training is an optimization problem right we have to minimize the mean square error so basically we have in our problem four inputs right so we'll give our neural network four inputs all right and we are going to get one uh, output which is the power generated so this output will be our predicted power generated right will not be a true power generated so we feed whatever uh, prediction we have got through these uh, we initialize with some random uh, weights and biases and we use techniques like uh, stochastic gradient descent and uh, other techniques to you know uh, try minimizing this objective function 
and uh, for those who are new to optimization i would also suggest you to watch our uh, optimization for uh, beginners i will put the link in the description box as well so basically we this is our objective function with our decision variables being the weights and the biases of the neural network and uh, obviously uh, the number of neurons and number of layers will be selected by us and these are the hyperparameters and uh, you know in order to create a really accurate model uh, hyperparameter tuning is uh, really important so let's uh, head to the matlab environment where we will be able to see this in action and also i would also suggest you to uh, utilize uh, python with their uh, you know tensorflow keras uh, modules which are uh, really great for machine learning applications because uh, it's really flexible to use but uh, in matlab it's really easy to use so i'm just trying to show you this in action but yeah also in order to learn uh, about neural networks in greater detail i would suggest you to uh, take a look at uh, andrew ung's course right so he has uh, made many videos on machine learning and you can utilize it that's how uh, everyone starts out with uh, this domain of uh, you know learning all right so let's head to the matlab environment okay so we are back in the matlab environment right and uh, you can find this particular code in the in the Git, in the github page right so i'll put the link in the description box or uh, you can find it in the comment section right and if you would like to play with this code we can uh, i mean you can just download it and uh, use it as you wish uh, and you can also follow along and uh, we can learn together right so that will be quite fun i think so you can use that as a resource right so let's uh, go step by step so this ccpp data right so i got this data from uh, a repository uh, i'll put the link in the description box for that as well right where you can find the data and you can uh, if you are using it for some project make sure you cite them right so i converted into a dot mat uh, file right so let's load it first of all Right, so let's evaluate this selection and let's look at this. So we know that the first four columns are our input and the final uh, column is our uh, target value. Right, So we want to train our uh, neural network such that we take in the first four uh, columns, the, the data present in the first four columns and our target value will be the data present in the fifth column. Right, so, um, so yeah let's uh, split it into two wherein x will uh, represent the input data whereas y will uh, represent the output data right and uh, this particular layer struct is our hyper parameter wherein we have three hidden layers right there are uh, three values and each hidden layer consists of 10 neuron 10 neuron and 5 neuron respectively we'll take a look at uh, the structure later and we are using relu function as our activation function uh, because uh, since it's a linear function it's uh, easier to optimize i mean there are other reasons for using other activation functions for example sigmoid is better for classification problems but here we are just using a normal feed forward network so uh, we will be using uh, poslin uh, aka relu function right so um now this this one we can either do pre-processing or we may not do pre-processing we can uh, take a look at both uh, pre-processing is basically uh, you know uh, normalizing your uh, input data and output data in order to avoid any biases present in the entire system i won't be doing uh, pre-processing here but uh, you can just change it to one right and uh, you can play along with it uh, play with the code you will see that uh, by doing pre-processing you will get more accurate data why because basically obviously uh, input in the temperature right will be in degree celsius and say pressure if it's in kilopascal if it's in completely different scale so that can produce biases in your uh, 
data that's being uh, generated right and have created this function called train neural net wherein we take in the inputs outputs the layer structure and uh, whether or not we want to pre-process as well as uh, which activation function uh, we are going to use so this is the function train neural net all right and uh, basically uh, you see here right this is basically uh, used rather uh, from line number 17 to line number uh, 23 is uh, the matlab code for uh, rather matlab syntax for uh, feed forward net so i'll just write feed forward net starts here all right uh, yeah so Finally, we will uh, produce our Y prediction using uh, our already available uh, input values and we'll compare to see how uh, our neural network does with the actual data. All right, so uh, we will run and we can see we can see something called as net one has been produced. So that's our neural network. So let's do view net one all right let's see the structure so here we can see that our input is four in number we have 10 10 and 5 uh, neurons in our hidden layer and our output consists of uh, just one output so that's what we got okay so let's look at uh, the comparison between our actual y and uh, the predicted y right so um, we can just do so we can see here that uh, this is our actual y the first column and the second column has our predicted y we can see that it's pretty close right to our uh, actual value obviously there'll be some uh, plant model mismatches but uh, i think we can work with this particular uh, data considering that we only have ambient temperature ambient pressure and relative humidity values in order to understand what uh, kind of energy output our entire plant will give so i think that's a pretty good uh, output right and finally you can also save your neural network right so you can just do i have called my neural network net one as you can see from line number 17 so we can just do save net one right so you can see that a new uh, file has been saved so i'll just clear everything right so I have cleared my workspace so I can just load my uh, net one right so I can just load this and I can just uh, pass on some input values so I can just pass on this uh, uh, input values so I can just put net one uh, control V and see we can get uh, the output so this particular thing was the input value of the first column so I basically put that so I hope uh, uh, you found this pretty cool and you will look at it in greater detail right so from this video you can see that we need not know everything about the system for example we need not know the underlying physics of the system given that we have enough data to build a reasonably accurate model right and uh, this has several applications and so these days you know big data is such a huge thing I, and i believe that uh, it has a great future ahead so if you are really interested do check out the links that i have uh, given in the description box and uh, hope you like the video until then uh, see you next time until then take care bye